new, 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 new. Yeah, I keep saying I'm gonna have a song for the new product section, but I'm not. It's not really a song. I don't even. No, I'm just gonna have you. I was like jamming out. I'm just gonna have you sing. New, 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 new. Okay. So what do you got this week? This is kind of new. Um, this is uh, with the starter kit from um, the. Okay, no, sorry, I'm spacing. Chibitronics. Sorry. Right. For the Chibitronics starter kit, um, if you pick up a starter kit, we now include a intro kit so you can give it away to someone, and it comes with um, three LEDs, some copper tape, a battery, and um, a clip. So basically, it's this really adorable little. Um, LED lighting kit, and you know the the starter kit has a lot more to it, but you get a little freebie with it. So um, I don't know; it's a good reason to pick up a starter kit. I just wanted to okay. bring that out there. It's as adorable. So I don't know, like ages nine plus, uh, give this to someone as a gift and to keep the starter kit for yourself. Okay. Um, what's cool about the next thing is we have a little video. Zoop zoop zoop. Yeah. I also have demos, so I can actually show the demos. Yeah. Like. So we've got all of these printers now. Yeah, I'm going to talk about them, and then I'm going to show them all at once on the overhead, okay? Okay. So this is, um, we've had thermal printers, and now we have more thermal printers. This is a mini thermal printer. It's smaller than this kind of standard one we have. You can see how small it is by a lovely hand model. And this one is actually kind of cool because not only is it compatible with, like, the old thermal printer code that we have for our other thermal printer, but it also supports USB. If you plug it in, it shows up as a USB COM port. And so if you want to use it with, like, a Raspberry Pi or, like, a BeagleBone or, like, a, or even just your computer, you just plug it into USB and you can just use our Python code. So it's, like, kind of the best way to use a computer with a thermal printer. Um, it uses 33-foot-long paper rolls, which we have in the store as well. And uh, you can see it does all sorts of, like, font sizes and line spacing. You can do barcodes. You can do graphics and QR codes by basically making it to a graphic. Okay. So, so that's the mini one. So next up is... Okay, so after that, this is, like, the teeny one. So this one is, like, the smallest thermal printer you get. It can only hold 16 feet of thermal paper, but it works just like the other thermal, uh, thermal printers I showed. Um, it's really, really small, and um, it has only one cable. Um, it's super cute. Like, if you want to make something that has um, a printer output and you really want to be as small as possible, this is the one to use. You can make, like, a wearable printer with this. This is, like, wearable size. I mean, this is basically what you would see in, like, you know, a handheld that, like, prints out receipts or something. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but it uses very small rolls of paper. I'll show that in the demo. And then lastly... Okay, and then next up, I'm going to show another video. This is a thermal printer guts. So this is like the innards of a thermal printer without the enclosure. Yeah. So you have to like put in the paper in yourself um, by like feeding it in. However, um, one of the nice things about this is that you can, it, it's extremely small because it has no other parts to it. It's like the smallest yeah. possible. And it's, you know, you got this flexible thing. It's very configurable, um, but you have to make your own paper bay or something it's to like hold the paper. It's smaller than a credit card. Yeah, it's very small. I can yeah. show a photo. This is the printing head. And so, yeah. you know, you can even extend the wires if you, you know, so wished. It has a kind of a, a flex connector. Um, and this you can use any size paper with, but you have to make the bay yourself. But we thought this okay. would be kind of interesting. Maybe you want to 3D print, you know, the case, and you'd have the paper in the, in the roller bay. Okay. Okay, we also have some paper that comes with it. Yeah. 33 foot long and 16 feet long. So this is what you need to fit inside the thermal printer. So let's go to... Um, the overhead, and I'm actually going to show. So this is our standard thermal printer. This is kind of what, you know, if you have um, purchased thermal printer from us in the past, this is what you got, and then, you know, the paper went in the bay here. So then we have, hold on, grab these thermal printers. This is the mini one. So this is the one that has um, the USB connection. And it's a little bit smaller, so you can see it's, it's you, know, you know, half the size-ish. Um, and then this one is the super teeny one. So this one, you can see, is, you know, maybe like a 30% smaller than the small, smaller one. And it's like a quarter of the size of the teeny one. Let me move my Arduino over. So you can see how much smaller it is. So for wearable projects, you know, we've seen a lot of people make portable projects. Like we saw somebody make like a camera um, 
it would like you could take a, a photo and basically it was like a Polaroid. It would print out the image, um, and they were using this, and it was just like huge. And and like the the photos they were printing out were very small, or like if you're printing a little portable like haiku maker, you can get away with a, a much much smaller printer. Okay. And then wait, I'm not done. Okay, sorry. This is um, the uh, printer guts, and so this is just you know this is you know basically what's inside of here but there's no enclosure and so you have to um, you basically have to remove this little rubber piece and feed the paper through and then you can close it up so you know you can either use really really long paper or really really short paper or you know you actually have a paper in a loop like there's nothing there's no reason why you can't and then you just have the, the control board here so these are you know various options I just thought I'd, uh, I do have a little demo I can just show of this printing. I already had it print some stuff, but um, I'll just show the, uh, the bay. So this is where the paper sits, and then you close it, and then I have, um, I have the example code running on the Arduino. So it shows you about how fast it can print. It can actually print a little bit faster. I'm, I'm using little delays in between. It just prints out yeah. very nicely. It goes a little bit slower when it's doing graphics and um, barcodes just because there's a lot more. It has to slow down it to really heat up the paper. And then you know, let's finish these graphics. The graphics, it does print a little slower because it has yeah. to really go One of the things the I pixels. like about what we're doing with these little printers is there's so much confusion out there. Like you can't even effectively do a search online because like search for printer or thermal printer. Yeah, There's yeah, just a billion e things. And so I think this um, this cuts the confusion down and there's a library for code. Yeah, the, the yeah. library where we yeah. have, we have worked on it for so long. Yeah. And so it's really solid. And what's really neat is that um, they all use the exact same code base. So you can prototype on this one and then move to a little one uh, because it's like annoying to keep replacing the paper. So if you're like, oh, I have to do a lot. This takes 50 feet and this takes 16. So as long as you just have the right size roll, doesn't bind, you can just use any thermal paper, really. That's, a, I think, two and a quarter wide. And that's the thermal printers. OK. Um, next up. We'll put these away. We've got. OK. This is a little uh, USB Wi-Fi dongle. And what's neat about these is it uses the um, RTL8188EU chipset which is kind of a new chipset. Um, so there, it's actually a little bit faster than kind of the standard RTL881, 8188CUS, I think. I don't remember the exact part number. The one that usually people use with the Raspberry Pi. This one is Raspberry Pi uh, compliant. It works with Linux. Uh, we tested it with Jesse. It works great. And it works with Windows 10 IoT. So if you're using Windows 10 IoT, it used to be that you could only use um, the, the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi dongle. Which, if you have it, it's great, but it doesn't work on other computers. It's like it's kind of really for Raspberry Pi only. Um, once I've had this Wi-Fi dongles, it works with like Mac, Windows, Linux, Windows 10 IoT. It's kind of useful for everything, and um, so I thought that would be good. So now we have two options for people who want to use uh, Wi-Fi with Windows 10, which you probably do. So check. Uh, it only works with the November 2015 or later release of Windows 10, but you know. Yeah. Plug it in and uh, get an IP address and you're ready to rock. OK. Some stars of the show here besides you. This is the Adafruit Mother Feather Wing. Motor That's Feather. Why we have that code for tonight. And here is a video. This is what it does. Yes. So this is, oh, you know, I just realized I didn't bring any tape with me. This is why we have the, uh, yeah, the video. Yeah. But I can, I can still sh kind of show a demo, anyways. Um, this is the uh, Motor Feather Wing that is basically like if you've ever used the Arduino Motor Shield that we designed, uh, the Motor Shield we designed for Arduino, this is basically a squished down version. We basically took the same design, squished it down, uh, used a transistor that's just smaller. Um, it drives two stepper motors or four DC uh, brushed motors. So you can either use like two steppers, four brushed DC, or two brushed and one stepper because you basically get um, eight total H bridges, so you can kind of like mix and match. Um, this shows it using with um, a motor, uh, two steppers. You can do single, double, micro-stepping. Um, what's neat is because the PWM is all done um, 
But over I squared C, you can do like full motor control, even with something like the ESP8266, which doesn't have like enough pins and, to do latching and the PWM and everything. And you don't have to worry about constantly setting the PWM speed. Um, it's taken care of for you by this um, PCA chip that kind of does everything, which is really, really sweet. Okay. So I can just show it. Um, oh, I can actually show two demos. Okay. Oh, the other one? Because we have two things going on here. Oh, you want to show both? Okay, let's well, just show. Because then I have a video for this is a servo okay. motor. Yeah. So we also have the servo bing, wing. Bing, 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 bing. So if you um, like the 16-channel uh, servo driver we have, you'll probably like this. It's basically that board, but made to work on uh, as a feather wing. Works on any of our feathers. And again, also use I squared C and stackable um, with the stepper motor driver as well. So if you want to use motors, steppers, servos, whatever, you can mix and match all of them together. Yeah. Um, it also uses I squared C, and you get eight servo channels. Um, we didn't have enough space on the board for 16, but eight's still a lot. And if you really need more, you can stack two of these together. Yeah. So there they go. Okay, and let's go to the other end. Okay. You have something you want. So yeah, this is, um, I just am showing it. So the feather wing, you know, if you, if you solder on stacking headers. Oh, sorry. Uh, if you use stacking headers, you can basically just stack this on top. This is a 32U4 feather wing. So this is just a kind of standard Arduino compatible. And you can plug it in. And then um, basically, oh, get your motors. Oh, no, I think I unplugged the uh, power. Hold on. I'm going to go try to plug it in. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh-oh. -uh. Yeah, one second. I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just quickly do it. All right. Sorry, just one second. While Lady Ada looks around for plugs, I'm going to go over some of the cards we got this year. We got this nice card. Um, oh, this, yeah, it's got a plug. Yeah. Oops. This is from iPixel LED. We got this card. That was very nice. We got this from DigiKey, which has a CD in it. And what's cool is um, I need to find a CD player. Um, so DigiKey sent us a CD. And then UPS, the card from UPS I really like because it has a little UPS truck. Maybe. And then here's a Mauser card. And then here's a Panda, Panda Vice card. So that was nice of some of the suppliers to send us cards. All right. OK. Card back to action. OK, so you get these two steppers, and um, they're rotating lovely. Um, so it just shows you it's very easy. You just have to give it 12 volt power to make sure your power is plugged in. And um, you, you're rocking. You can drive any DC or stepper motor that uh, uses about 1 and 1.2 amps per coil. Um, that's a lot for a stepper motor, and it's also a you know, fair amount for a DC motor. And uh, I can do three amps peak. And um, there's like Excel stepper and other libraries if you want to do ramping and stuff. So that's that demo. Hold on, let me unplug this. And then I've got the servo demo. So you've got all these like servos all over the place here. And then this is 12 volt power supply, and I want to grab my 5 volt. Sorry, one second. This is the 5 volt power. Uh, oh, got it. Um, so if you want to power your servos with 5 volts, and then power the board. The board does get powered um, separately. And that's because you want to have your motor power supply be separate from your logic power supply. So you can power the board from a LiPo. If you really want, you can power them from the same 5 volts, but it's not really suggested. And basically, it's just a servo party. And yeah. uh, you get jitter-free servo control. And so that's kind of nice. I think next year, we're going to be able to um, help people with robotics. I think doing robotics is kind of crummy. It is, it's a little difficult. And then for my final demo, there's also a little bit of it's not out yet. So don't ask. Um, we've got this little robot. So this is a little robot chassis we're going to have soon. Oh. But inside, I didn't know you were going to show this. I'm no, just, no, but it's, but it's part of the demo. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying robotics for makers. Um, when I was uh, writing at Make, yeah, I kind of didn't like robotics because it was always crummy. But everyone's like, oh, you should have something for about robotics, and it was just like, yep, it's expensive and it sucks. So and so, and so now we can kind of focus on the good stuff, which is it's going to be easy and it's going to be low cost because of stuff like Feather. The hardest part is just keeping a grip on your screwdriver. Don't yeah. Flip out of your hand. Um, so let me remove this top piece here so you can see this better. This is a cute little top that you can just mount more stuff onto if you want to have sensors or whatever. Okay. So um, this shows you've got um, a blue fruit feather. 
So it's got a Bluetooth low energy module over here and it's powered off of a LiPo battery and then it's got that motor wing that you saw before. So it can control up to four motors. Right now I'm only doing two motors. Um, I have two, they look like servos but they're actually DC motors in a servo body. And um, it's got this little, little wheel that just lets it spin around. And then um, you can basically make your own. So you're going to control this robot with the Blue Fruit app? I am, and it's probably going to run off of the table, so whatever. Yay. <laughs> so um, I start up the Blue Fruit app, connect. So this is what I'm talking about. To controller. And then, I don't know if this was, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. So you can. Well, okay, one, the robot's fast, and that, this was a really easy project to put together. And this wasn't that expensive. So you can have it rotate, and right. then oh wait, I'll have it. Whoa, <laughs> I'll have it rotate the other way, and then back up a little bit. Okay, I think I hit something. Hold on, we, we connect. Also, you probably should. I probably should have made this with um, two battery packs, so it's it's um, not just. Uh, so the whole thing is. So it doesn't have it all running off one battery because yeah. I, I don't know if the battery is, is really good enough to do both. Yeah. Well. But. So yeah, you can make your, little, time to have fun. make your own little Bluetooth robot. Basically, just use the, those, the motor yeah. wing. And I have it on a doubler here, but you could stack it on top. And then probably what I'll do is I'll grab like a AAA battery pack, like a three AAA battery pack, and then drive the yeah. servos off of that. And then have a smaller LiPo that I tuck underneath here that's just for um, the Blue Fruit Feather. But yeah. we were in a little bit of a rush today. So. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be neat when like, you know, in, in schools, robotics is expensive and hard and it's old and you need a giant computer to mess with it. I think it'll be interesting when schools could potentially have kids with their phones, which are supercomputers, control a low cost, you know, Featherbot. Yeah. I like the Featherbot. It's cute. Yeah. Okay. So it's got a nice little. All right. Red and with chassis. that, Lady Ada. So that's a demo. Is the new products. That's it. Yay.